Hello gentlemen, welcome to our video on section 15.5 called Calculating Equilibrium Constants. Now, when equilibrium concentrations of pressures are known, it's pretty straightforward and actually pretty easy to calculate your equilibrium constants for uh, concentration or pressure, so K sub C or K sub P. And we learned last class how to do that using these different equations or different expressions. So we, if we know the concentrations, we can plug them in with their correlating uh, coefficients and figure out what the K sub C value is. And the same with if we know the partial pressures of our mixture uh, of our gases in equilibrium, we can calculate the K sub P. However, that's only in perfect scenarios. Oftentimes we do not know the equilibrium concentrations or pressures of all substances in the equilibrium mixture. Maybe one, maybe two, but definitely not all, usually not. Sometimes none of them. Thus, we must observe how the initial concentration of pressures change as we reach equilibrium. So we have some initial concentration or initial pressure, then we go through some kind of change. My reactants are usually depleted in some form or fashion, creating my products, and then I have some concentrations present at equilibrium. So in order to go through and learn how to observe that, let's look at a sample problem. So this problem reads, a mixture of 0 0.10 moles of NO, 0 0.050 moles of H2, and 0 0.10 moles of H2O is placed in a 1.0 liter vessel at 300 Kelvin. The following equilibrium is established through this equation. We have two moles of NL gas reacting with two moles of H2 gas in equilibrium with one mole of N2 gas and two moles of water vapor. The question is, at equilibrium, the concentration is equal to 0.062 molar. If that's the case, calculate the equilibrium concentrations of N2, H2, and H2O, obviously at equilibrium. And second, calculate your K sub C value. Now to answer this question, we must create something called an ice chart. That's what it's called, I mean, slang, ice chart. I stands for initial change and equilibrium. So we're going to observe how each of these substances are initially, and in what way they change, and how they end at equilibrium. So first things first, we look at how they are initially. Well, initially, we're talking about concentration since we're trying to, trying to find K sub C and we're asking for concentrations here. We look at how concentration is involved. So we have the number of moles for each substance per one liter in that vessel. So moles over liters give us concentration. So since it's per one liter, we know we get our molarity just by looking at the number of moles there. So we have 0 0.10 molar NO to start with. And I'm going to leave off the molar just to keep things simple. We know it's molar, it's all concentration. And we have 0 0.050 molar H2. And we have 0 0.10 molar H2O. They didn't give us any information about N2, so we can assume that it's zero. We didn't have any N2 in this equilibrium mixture, or this, sorry, this reaction. So, as you can imagine, our reactants are going to react together and start producing products initially. So we haven't reached equilibrium just yet. So initially we have these concentrated reactants, they're going to react together. They're going to deplete, meaning they're going to start disappearing at some rate or at some steady, yeah, steady rate of disappearing of concentration. That rate is dependent upon their stoichiometric coefficient in this case. We learned that last chapter. So since they have a one-to-one -one ratio, they're going to disappear at the same rate meaning the concentration is going to change by the same amount. How much? Well, we need some more information. In our question, they gave us 
that at equilibrium, the concentration of NO is 0 0.062 molar. So that's down here. So after everything has changed, we end up with 0 0.062 moles per liter of NO at equilibrium. So this change here is a change of 0. Oh, sorry. No, just point three eight. My apologies. So it changes by. You can see that point zero three eight in order to get here. Since we have a two to two ratio or one to one ratio, this substance will also change by zero point zero three eight. When we do that, we get 0.012. And for significant figure's sake, this is actually going to just round down to 0.6 since it only goes to the hundreds place here, hundreds place there, just so we can carry that on later on. Now, let's look at the other side, my products. So my coefficients are 2 to 2 to 1 to 2. So here we have another 2 here. So basically, these, are, these all have the same ratio, 2 to 2 to 2. So since this, these are being depleted or changing by 0 0.038, this is going to increase by 0 0.038 because it's a product. It's going to be produced. So we have an increase here. So we add these two up. 0 0.138, but before you write that down, significant figures, this only goes to the hundredth place, so that's going to limit, or I have to round this to, so it becomes 0.14. Now, my ratio here to 1, so I have 2 to 1 to 2 to 2. Well, 1 is half of 2. So if this de increased by 0 0.038, this is going to increase by half of that amount because 1 is half of 2. This will increase by 0 0.019. And 0 plus 0 0.019 is just 0 0.019. So now, what this tells us is that initially, we started with these concentrations of my substances here. They changed by these amounts. These decreased by 0 0.038, giving us these concentrations at equilibrium. So when this substance or this reaction is at equilibrium, these are the concentrations of my reactants that are there. For my products, they've increased by these amounts. And these are the concentrations of my products at equilibrium. So that is the answer to A, these four boxes there. And of course, we left off the unit of molarity because we know that that's understood in this case. Now for B, calculate K sub C. We know that K sub C, as an equi as the equilibrium expression, is our products over our reactants. Now our products we have to incorporate the coefficients here as powers. And the same for our reactants. And now we have to plug in our values. And just so I can see these. Throw them over there. So the concentration of N2, this is at equilibrium because this is an equilibrium expression. Concentration of N2 was 0 0.019. Concentration of H2O is 0 0.14, and that's squared. The concentration of NO 
remember, is 0 0.06, and that is squared. And lastly, the concentration of H2 is 0 0.012. And that is squared. When we simplify this, we get about 7 times 10 to the second. And our units really don't matter for this case sub c value. So we get 7 times 10 to the second, and that is our equilibrium expression constant. This number is quite a bit above 1, 700. So we know that the products have been favored in this reaction more than the reactants. Gentlemen, take notes. We'll do more practice on this next time. Adios.